Amen. Merry Christmas once again. Yes, it's a beautiful day. It falls on a Sunday. I think this happened some years back. And we are here to celebrate Christmas on a Sunday. We'll be celebrating 31st again on a Saturday before fast. And God has been good to us to look at Christmas. Christmas is a day many people travel. That's why we did one service. Christmas is a day where many of us make chapatis and favorite meals. That's why I should finish the service shortly before lunch. You go and warm that. But Christmas, above everything else, is about Christ who was born. Amen? Very important. Tell your neighbor, Christ was born on Christmas Day. And so on that premise, I want to share a short sermonette I've entitled, His Glory Revealed. His Glory Revealed. Our theme for the year 2022 has been radiating His glory, God's glory. And there's no perfect radiating of God's glory without Christ, without His Son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Actually translated in English, if you are a good linguist, is immanent. He is present with us. And he was present with us when he was born. He will say his name will be Emmanuel. Basically meaning he is with us. So God sent us Emmanuel as a manifestation of his glory on earth and in us. It was to the earth and in us. While many people are celebrating all around, it is just like around us. But the greater thing was that he was going to be in our hearts and he should be in our hearts all the days of our life. So Christ, the second person of Christ was born of Mary, betrothed to Joseph, as many of us have listened from different songs. And the Apostle John, in John chapter 1, verse 14, says this, The world became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so the Apostle John pointed out that no one had seen the Father except the, um, uh, the Son, and that he, has revealed, he is the revealed God. So God was like hidden. We grew up in a rural part of this country, some of us, and we would go to look for something called cassava, and sometimes the, the sweet potatoes. So at one point, if you are slashing, you can actually cut off those plantation of the of the of the of the what we call it the the sweet potato so if a farmer would actually come later to look for food which is normally um, you, you 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 remove the soil and you get the 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 the, 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 the potatoes at times you can get at a place you realize there is no growth of anything but when you remove you realize a big something God needs to give you a revelation in case you are actually buying to sell, to go and get where the big is, big thing is. Our greater God was born to us a revelation of God's glory that we may radiate him and walk with him. And that is what I want to share on this Christmas. So Jesus Christ is the radiance of his glory, the exact likeness of God. In fact, I don't know whether it was here we are talking about Mary was a virgin. And God gave him the seed. And that's why Joseph was running away. In last week drama, they were trying to persuade Joseph not to run away. The reason is you can run away when God manifests himself. He comes and gives a seed through Mary for Jesus to be born to us. His glory made manifest in us. In essence, we are being now us to be able to radiate the same in our life. And we want to consider, if you were to send a mail, many of us grew up on those days, part of us, um, I think Reverend Patrick Dickon and uh, Shelimo, my elder here, when you are dating your wife, we used to send letters. And uh, if the letter was brought by the sender, it meant a lot. Assume that was your wife, assume, or one of your best girlfriend you left. It meant a lot when they came in person to deliver the mail. And this is what God did when he sent his only son to come. It's not that God was not there with us, 
God was there as we'll be looking in some few passages and then I finish. God was there, but he was considered to be far away. He was so mysterious that only the priest and the high priest would go and pray. But here he comes in person. And in fact, as I prayed last Sunday, Herod the king wonders, how comes there is another king and I have no notice of the same. So Christ came in person. A male was delivered in person that we will be able to be able to radiate his glory. And I pray that that is going to be a blessing as you look at Christmas, God coming in person. For many of you going through many challenges, allow me to preach to you. God will come in person. He was born. Some of you will dare run away. Amen. I'm not a prophet. My members here have been asking whether we prophesy. But I can prophesy with you. My eyes open. God can come in person the way he came through Mary. And you will be actually be perturbed. You will be mused. And some of you as the ladies acted last, because of your doubt, you may be asked to keep quiet and do that manifestation. Gross. I love that drama. Many of you are not there, but I can dare tell you. I look at three things and then we close. His glory concealed, his glory being revealed progressively, and his glory being manifested fully. I will be looking at Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4, and then Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 to 16, and then we have already read John chapter 1 verse 14. But allow me to read Hebrews chapter 1 to verse uh, 14 of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews. Um, Hebrews chapter 1. Uh, I'm using an analog Bible and I'm trying to hurry. But uh, I'll be able to catch up with the time. Just some few minutes and you'll be able to catch up with your ch uh, chapatis. Uh, that will be good for you. If you are there, say amen. My Bible keeps on running away from that. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things. I can pause there, but the thing is, in the old days, God was far away from people. He was so mysterious. He was so hidden. In fact, some people are still searching ways to please God. And I one day tell you that his glory is revealed. One of the greatest things that I want to tell you for many of us who are going to celebrate Christmas, whatever you have, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Because God is no longer hiding. To conceal is not to allow, is the, the, the simple definition is not to allow to be seen. You know? You know, many of you go to see uh, great people. The reason why I don't also go for rallies is that I can see the president on the TV more than when I'm in the stadium. He's hidden sometimes. Okay? You can really be able to be in a place and the presence is not there. The people will not feel the presence of God. And they would go and sacrifice on the altar. And Hebrews chapter 10 talks about when they did their ritualistic practices of slaughtering whatever they would do to please God. Because the glory of God was hidden. Moses at one point when he was seeking to see God and be, seek to see the face of God to take the Israel to the promised land, he gets a place and he goes to the tent of the meeting to seek the face of God and he comes. The people would just wait that Moses would come. So the face of God was actually hidden. So when he was born in Christmas or on Christmas and the day is not very important as such, it is the the revelation, the revelation of Christmas is that God came to be with us. So in the Old Testament, God was considered transcendent. He was far away. He was so mysterious. And rites and ritualistic practices were done in order to seek the cleansing of many that were seeking to find God. And they could not completely get that. And that's what Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 10. It was incomplete. It was incomplete. Many of my cousins and other things were asking, for Christmas, we like the good cloth. God has changed many of us to look at Christmas and know the truth is the focus who is Christ the King, who was born. Thank you, worship team, for trying to amalgamate and talk about the greatness of God. That is the essence of Christmas. 
Could be flowers, could be clothes, could be food. But the thing was, when Christ was revealed, he became the center stage of our lives. He is no longer concealed. He is no longer hidden. So, traditional cultural practices I've talked about, and I pray that God will reveal himself. But there are many occasions that when we have people conceal certain gifts, like the way we conceal and reveal to you a gift of your anniversary, it is very important for kings. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, when I was preparing this, I realized that this concealing was not bad. For God not to come, it was not bad. He meant good. It's only that our hardness of heart made him to say, I must come in person and then fully reveal this. Okay? So, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. So in that also God not being able to be revealed before Christmas. It doesn't make God any lesser. I should speak to us. You need to get that. He remained to be a great God. And it was still his glory. But the problem was with the human heart. And some of us do that. When we do that like we did this, Coincidentally, we didn't alert Mama. I know she could have been here or she would have said, do next. So it becomes. But our interest is good to affirm family in you, Reverend. God has been with you to bless you with our daughter, Deborah, your only begotten daughter. It is the glory of God to do that when other things are hidden from you. So progressive revelation. We read from where we've read in John chapter 1, verse 14. That God was able to reveal his son to us because he loves us. He continually loves us. And so he, out of that, he is in the pursuit of showing himself to us. When you love people, you show many ways. I know many of you who ate maybe fish last Christmas. You may not want to eat Christmas this. You do a progression. You are revealing yourself that I am the father to my family. I am the mother to the family. And so... The means for progressive revelation, who is Christ, meant that God still loved us. I've said in the foundation that God, when he hid Christ from us, he didn't hate us. And so that does not mean that when Christmas was not celebrated in the Old Testament, it meant anything that God was not with the Israelites. It's not that way. God is still love. He loved his people. He had his prophets and he loved the prophets. And he would speak to them. And he would want the prophet to stay closer to him. That means God cherished his greatness. God cherished his glory. God cherished wherever that he was holding dear to him. And so, in his way to continue to reveal himself, as many of us say, he brings now the greater prophet, Jesus Christ, is actually the epitome of his love. When you look at God's attribute, that he is omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, all everywhere, it shows you that God, as he was in the Old Testament, he continued to reveal himself to the human beings. And so, the birth of Christ superseded every repeated mosaic sacrifices. So when Christ now comes as a true revelation, it becomes an epitome of our worship. So his glory is finally revealed. Tell your neighbor, his glory is finally revealed. If your neighbor on the other side did not believe you, turn to the other neighbor and tell them, his glory is finally revealed. God sending his son was that we would know that he is with us. And he sent the perfect likeness. Somebody joked with us the other day and said that my wife looks like me. The good thing is we come from different sub-tribes. But it's beautiful if somebody sends you somebody like you. Amen? I know some of you when you grow older, it's beautiful. And God comes like a human being. He did not send a donkey. I know people who talk about God being a donkey. Or some of you who cherish some plantations, there are some of you who cherish some plantations in your compound. I will not go into that. There are many of us who cherish even cars. 
And you are praying for your cousins. Some of us sitting here, you are the cousin I'm referring to. And people say, may the Lord bless you that you bless me. Yani you don't see the glory of God in your life. He can only to Pastor Patrick that he may bless me. May the Lord bless you that you bless me. That is not. God came in person that you will be blessed. Amen. He was the perfect glory. In fact, when many of you are sick, I one day tell you on this Christmas, you will just lay hands on your children and say, pastors have closed offices, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. When you find trouble that now the chapatis are not making the Mary of the wife and husband pray that there is peace in this house in Jesus' name. That is what meant when his glory was made manifest. When you realize that things are not going right and Christ has come and his glory is here, is to pray and become the high priest now. Because God has replaced the prophets with his son. And the son is accessible by every person that confesses him as the Lord and personal savior. Amen. That is Christmas for you. So you will not doubt and say, I have not eaten meat, I have not eaten yamachoma, I have not been taken outside, I have not feeling well that this Christmas has no laughter. You will find the meaning of Christmas when you see the glory of God being manifest in your lives. He is the perfect radiance of God's glory. His birth is ultimately God's grander revelation to humanity. It is grander, it's bigger, it's greater. All the superlative terms you would say. This is incomparable even to what Isaiah. Isaiah had to wait for the other man to die and then he saw the glory of God. This is grander. It's greater for us to be able to see the glory of God. The sacrifice is by our Savior. It no longer calls you to make sacrifices. Even if you leave this house and you go and eat some greens, the sacrifice has been made. Perfect. The glory, the glory of God is in Christ. In theology we say, and he created and formed an everlasting covenant. No other covenant is supposed to be made. And you know God made a covenant with Abraham. He made with Noah. He made with David. But here comes the last and final of it when Christ comes. Our children who are in the house, if you didn't receive a good cloth, if your parents will just ask and pray in Jesus' name, that is Christmas. Amen? I know some of us like cloth, like to be taken out. Christmas was about the shining of the glory of God. And I pray that that commitment is going to be in our families. I pray that it's going to be the center stage of our church. I pray that it's going to be the center stage of every celebration that Christ is greater, grander, he is the perfect revelation of God's glory. You can honor God in those few ways, abide in his word, abide in his word. You can obey his voice. When Mary was told that, the, that he is going to have the baby, she believed. It is said if you do the exegetical or analysis of that scripture, it seems that God had prophesied to Mary a long time ago because it was not the, the next time she's being told you have a, 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 a baby. Well, she was a virgin. But seems, seems, seems that she had prayed. And you look at the, the cousin Elizabeth. The, the, the analogy and the way they behave, a voice had spoken to them. And they obeyed the Lord. And they surrendered to his glory. Surrender to God and say, God, you will avoid unnecessary ritualistic practices. Make Emmanuel the reason for the season. He's the perfect radiance of his glory. Abide. That will be our theme. Next year, we don't want many things. We want to sit at the feet of Jesus and see what God can do. In fact, I'm daring some of you, don't do this if you are a strategic planner. I've only made one goal for 2023, that Lord, I want to sit at your feet. Amen. And see what you can do. Like you can go and write 10 of them. I just want to be at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And see what God can do. That can be very good. We want to make the manual the reason of the season. We are doing so many things. So many things. Many of us. And we realized we are unfulfilled. We went to do shopping yesterday with my wife. We could not. 
The line is too long. I hope today is shorter. Otherwise, we continue to pray. <laughs> Let's not be disturbed by many things. There are so many. On the road, people are fast, yet we are not going to work. Where are you going? I know you are going for, but they are fast overtaking and obscuring. Make the perfect radiant to be Christmas, Christ, Emmanuel, and I surrendering to his glory, obeying his voice, abiding his word. I want to conclude as Reverend Patty comes now to pray. God is inviting us to that light, to radiate his likeness through Christ Jesus. He is the perfect radiance that was born today. You cannot do that if you don't have Christ in you. Where well, I can speak these things, if you don't have Christ, you will not see what I'm talking about. You will still go home and ask for clothes, ask for a new car, ask for a debt. God is peace in your heart. You just pray for peace. You pray for peace. I know some of my friends who are unwell and I looked at God and said, God, if I would just took water and I feel good in my heart, that is great. There are people that are sick. Some both physically, some are sick even spiritually. May God be the reason for your season. May the Lord bless you. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas with rose and blessing and melody. Where is Peter? Yeah, she's seated somewhere else. But I wish you a Merry Christmas, a prosperous 2023 in the presence of God. Celebrate knowing that Christ is the reason of the season.